Hello and welcome to NARC Live on Wednesday the 8th of September 2021, coming to you live from Norfolk on the east coast of England with Tammy M0TC. Hello. And me, David G7RP. Good to see you. On tonight's show, James and Lynn show us how they achieved those wonderful wildlife pictures from around their garden. Yeah, they're waving because it proves it's live. We look back at some very sunny pictures from Radio by the Seaside last Sunday and we find out what on earth is this. Now we've had normally loads of guesses and things like that to our previous ones but is this one Fox due because we've only had two guesses by email so if you have not yet guessed and you want a, a minute or so to do that you think you know what this thing is should I give him a clue? Mm. It's not really fair, is it, on the others? But I'm, no, I'm not going to give it any no. plug. I'm not going to give it a plug. No. Okay. So this, if you know what this is, enter it now on BATC or on Facebook, and we'll read it out when we get to that part of the show. Now, normally at this time is when we read you the club news, and then we do the competition, and then we go to our main event. But because this is live and it's 7:33 at the moment. Um, and we're, 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 we're hanging on to the last bits of daylight in James's garden. We're going to show you around his garden now while we've still got some light. And then later on, we'll take you inside to show you how it all works. So back to you now, James, and to Lynn, who's cameraman tonight. James, round to you. Good evening, David. Right, while the light's still here, let's have a quick wander around the garden. OK, we've got a PTZ camera up here, which is a pan, tilt and zoom. That's what it stands for. It means, obviously, it can move left and right, up and down, and zoom in there and out. Um, cost of one of those in excess of normally £100, but just over the £100 mark, unfortunately. But you get quite a few pennies for your bucks. We've got a second one in the corner there as well. Uh, coming down here underneath the table, if we can get down, right underneath the table, there was a little sensor there. And I'll explain a little bit more about that sensor in a second when we uh, show you the other camera. James, I've right, sat in your this... garden and I didn't know about that sensor. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. It, it's for when people scratch themselves They're on the oh, leg. So yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> um, right, no, realistically, we've got a camera down here on the ground now why is it that low right okay we haven't got gnomes or anything uh, what we have <laughs> though is hedgehogs yeah oh. and if limb pans that round there's the hedgehog feeding station we've had to make a feeding station because after a while the local cats figured out that there was food sitting about so um oh my goodness. Uh, we had to make it a little bit dif difficult for cats to sort of come in and uh Obviously, uh, you know it's the name Boss Hogs Diner. I had to come. We had to come up what, with something. Well, like tell that. tell us why, James. Why is it called Boss Hogs Diner? Well, it started off with Hogs Diner because um, we thought obviously hedgehogs, yeah. And then uh, our friend James PQF suggested it should be Boss Hogs Diner. So, uh, and I thought, what a great idea! And the little sensor we were talking about underneath the table earlier. That is to let us know if there's actually movement around here so we can actually have a look on the cameras and see the hedgehogs having their tea. Wow. So, uh, let's, yeah. Do, so, do you uh, think, I mean, I know we're tempting fate by saying this, but do you think there's any chance later on when it gets a bit dark and a bit more quiet, do you think there's a chance we might see anything tonight? Well, I've booked them, so at high cost. <laughs> right. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and... Uh, Let's hope they've uh, remembered us, yeah? Okay, There's well, certainly food there waiting for them, yeah? Brilliant, all right. So uh, let's start a wander down the garden anyway. Well, we've still got some light. But I've got to say, it is a lovely evening. And uh, it's uh, still above 20 out here, I think. So uh, yeah, It I is remarkable, still... actually, isn't it? I mean, for the you know, yeah. cons if we'd have done this even a week ago, it wouldn't have looked like that. I tell you what, James, I know you're about to show us something, but we, because we couldn't see this earlier when we did a rehearsal, but we can see the red infrared glow from that light there on the tree. So maybe oh, you, you yes. just, we, we, which we couldn't see earlier. So maybe you just like yeah. to quickly explain that. Otherwise, I think people at home may, may wonder what it is. Okay. 
CCTV cameras have got two modes. They've got a daytime mode, which uses natural light that's obviously coming from the sun, uh, so you can see by that. But nighttime, obviously, it becomes very dark, and uh, they can't use that. So what they do is switch to an infrared mode. In the camera, is built in infrared lights, just like we've got in here. This isn't a camera. This is actually just an infrared light. So it actually lights up this patch of ground, which obviously the lights from the cameras can't quite reach. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's how they work at night time. So you just have to give them, what, 12 volts or so, something like that? Uh, every, all cameras out here work off 12 volts. Right. I think at least as radio amateurs, we'll all understand 12 volts and have 12 volts handy. So thanks for that. Yeah, that's all right. No problem at all. So uh, coming around here, obviously, uh, uh, we had a nest in the tree because we've got half of our tree is actually hollow. So if you can see the aerial there and there's a little thing there. And uh, I think uh, we've got a little video of um, the birds when they were nesting in there earlier on in spring, haven't we? Yeah, here we go. Uh, we're now showing this to everybody at home. And if you have just tuned in, it's not what you think. <laughs> so these pictures Simple. are coming through from that, and you're going to show us the camera in a moment, aren't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you a camera uh, inside in a little while, but uh, that is sort of stuck in a piece of pipe that actually goes down into the top of the tree. And it's surprising, last year was the first time they nested in there, to our knowledge. And um, as I say, it's surprising how nature always finds a way, isn't mm. it? How long did it take for them to do it? When you, Did you set it up a year? Because sometimes they don't come to something that a man has created initially, do they? Well, uh, surprise, uh, in this, uh, uh, obviously that was just a hole in the tree to start off with, and we just put sort of flowers in the top of the tree, right. and um, they found a hole themselves. Oh, I this see. Year, right. Yeah, this year, obviously at the beginning, I tidied it up a, bit, a little bit, made the hole a little bit smaller so predators couldn't go in there so easily and uh, steal the eggs or the young. And uh, they came back and saw us, thankfully. I mean, it's always a wish. But um, with the mm. nest box that we'll show you in a little while, I had literally set that up, put it on the tree and thought, right, I'll do some adjustments. And uh, they'd moved in instantly. Fantastic. You know, uh, yeah, that is amazing, yeah, so, James. Uh, right. Yeah. So, all right, let's uh, go and have a look at some of the other cameras then. All right. Uh, so, we obviously, okay. immediately we can see you've got a pond and we've got you've got some fish in there. I know, aren't they lovely? It's so tranquil to sit down here yes. on a lovely day or oh, an lovely evening like this and uh, hear the tinkle of water. Is that the right word? Yeah, I think so. Trickle. And, and, and yeah, t yeah trickle. trickle would be safer, I think, than tinkle. <laughs> Unless you like carry on films, which Tammy doesn't. Yeah, and I've so. got my sort of low key bridge there. Oh, yeah. yes. I think I think our viewers at home now are getting the idea about this home is uh, is fairly uh, electrified, shall we say? I, I do like my gadgets, yeah. Mm. So, so and but uh, you know um, what amateur radio enthusiast doesn't? Absolutely, really. yeah. So, so what have we got right, there? Oh, right. These are normal bullet cameras. They call them. Uh, they don't do anything like move or zoom in and out. Uh, these start in the range, I would say, from about £35 upwards. These are HD, and I do think it's worth um, paying a little extra for HD. Some of my cameras are actually QHD, which is halfway between HD and 4K. So, um, But obviously, the more pixels you've got thrown about your network, the more you have to deal with uh, over the mm. network and such. Now, I know um, you're going to go into the wiring in detail later, James, but if we could just look at that, because it's obviously got some cabling for power and things. Can you just tell us a little bit about the connections to it now? Okay, then. Yes, certainly. I mean, a, a connection comes from the camera. This has actually got sh um, some uh, shielding uh, conduit on the outside just to give it a little bit of protection. Uh, they all terminate inside this box. Inside there, there's a network connection. There's Ethernet cabling going to it, which is, you know, your normal networking that comes from your router. And uh, that all obviously goes back to the house and obviously joins onto my network. And obviously, they're being supplied with 12 volts as well to power them. So uh, they uh, all join together. And there's even, uh, I've even got a uh, switch down here to join all the network connections together. 
before it actually goes back to the host. So, uh, yeah. A switch is a bit like a uh, extension lead that you'd buy for electricity to join mm. everything together. Yeah, I think There's we used to call them there. hubs, didn't we? But the switch is just a bit of a smarter one that allows the, the um, data yeah. to go through a bit faster. Yeah, it's, um, uh, we have got, uh, you're right, David, uh, a switch is a bit more intelligent. It actually looks at the traffic and decides where it's going to route it. Yeah. Whereas a hub, all that does is just literally sends it out to all its ports and uh, uses bandwidth up on your network unnecessarily. Uh, we've got another motion sensor up on the pole over there, uh, just but, like we had underneath the but, but, but table. But that's pointing out towards the field. So is that to see any other wildlife that might be around there? Yeah. If you look the other side of our fence, we've got a little, lovely little strip of grass here. And they love sort of... Um, searching for food in the grass of a night time so and we've got cameras at the back there hidden in the tree just to look at the grass as well so it's a it's a surprising uh, how many cameras i have got around here Absolutely. i think i've got too little and lean things i've got too many <laughs> i think you've got more cameras than the bbc would have on uh, spring watch or something there oh we oh yes we can't sit, can't go without having a look at this your lighthouse Oh, I got my lighthouse as well, which, uh, you know, every rockery needs a lighthouse. And we've obviously got in the corner another PTZ camera. So, uh, Fantastic. so uh, right, back over the magical bridge. James, just before we go down the garden, yeah? so the, obviously the cables of this, what, just because we, you know, we are radio amateurs and lots of us have got antennas in the garden things, so we're used to putting cables outside. How have you protected the cables for the 12 volt feed and the and the Wi-Fi and things like that. How have you, where, have you buried it in the garden, I presume? It's all down the gardening conduit. Um, obviously, there's mines goes down to the garden for the pond anyway, which it was originally. And obviously, I've then got uh, waterproof boxes with transformers in them, reducing the power down to 12 volts to run the feed, uh, the cameras and all that. And uh, obviously, there's a single network cable going up with the mains cable as well. Uh, it's not a, a network cable in the same conduit. Mains isn't ideal, but uh, it's all safe. And, uh, you sure. know, nothing's going to happen. So, uh, you know, uh, might, I might get into a little bit of interference, off it, but it doesn't seem like it, it does work. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, great. Well, well, let's let's continue the tour of your garden. Yeah. Now. Oh, yes. Uh, we didn't... Sh There's one up in the uh, bush. We've got up there if you want to... If, uh, Lynn, our camera lady, we'll just show you uh, up there. We've got oh, one yes. there just shining yeah. down on the pond so we can keep an eye on our fish. Again, we're because lucky, obviously, James, yeah. because we can see the, the red lights. When we were doing a rehearsal around about four o'clock, we couldn't see those because of the bright sunshine. But now we can actually see the glow of the infrared lights. Yeah, and they are the lights that obviously um, show things uh, in the dark. Hmm. So I don't know if the cameras are... Uh, it's about time for the cameras to actually switch over again. So let's um, let's uh, move on to the uh, bird box over here. OK. By the way, we've got lots of nice comments coming in for you. Doug Spooner says, I love the lighthouse. Um, Richard M6 UES, as I said already, it's the most high-tech garden I've ever seen, James. Looks great, he <laughs> says. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lynn loves it too, yeah. Right, let's have a quick look in here. <laughs> was it loves me? One of those, yeah. <laughs> right, let, let's have a quick look. Right, I, I obviously built this. I thought, well, I've got to put a CCTV camera in there. We fitted one in there. Don't know where uh, that looks like. Uh, we've got a good picture from that. Is that one of the standard sort of fixed cameras then? Is it so around about 30, 40 pounds, that sort of amount? Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, it's, uh, I did the heights because this particular camera, I couldn't actually adjust the focal length on, unfortunately. Um, it seemed um, in the first place when I built the size and did my measurements, it was perfectly in focus for the bottom of it. What I didn't account for really is when the birds went in there and built their nest, they built, I don't know, most probably five inches of nest at the bottom. They got closer to the camera, so my pictures this year were slightly out of focus, unfortunately. But we could still enjoy their journey, and right. it was a lovely journey to watch. Absolutely, so, uh, yeah. Let's have a quick look inside here anyway. So inside here, i just pop that off. Oh, uh, I had already taken all the screws that hold it in normally. Looks ready the for the next inhabitants then. 
Yeah, all cleaned out and all ready. So uh, I don't know if um, Tammy's got the other feed she could just swap over to. But, yeah, uh, we're just going to try and do that now. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Hang on. Yeah. We're just intently watching there. We've got several cameras and several feeds coming from James's house here. I, and I don't know if we can got, got it. No, I don't we, think I've got that, James. We've got your dining room chairs, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. Okay, I, I'm just wondering if my iPad has yeah. gone into some we've, sort of sleep mode. We've, or got, like we've got a blank one on the other yeah, feed don't, at the don't, moment. Don't, so don't worry, James. Don't worry about we, that. We've got an no, idea. Well, that, right. no. that actually, that picture that Lynn just took there, that was great. We could see again the infrared camera, the, the, the lights uh, around the camera. I guess in some cameras, you've got infrared LEDs around the lens. I think most of us have seen that sort of thing. Right. Actually, one thing, actually, if somebody's thinking about doing this, what I found, actually, is with the camera, I actually taped over some of the infrared light LEDs because, obviously, uh, uh, inside of, they're designed to floodlight a massive area, so you can see it. Obviously, I'm only doing a bird box, and I was getting too much light in there, which I was afraid might scare the birds. Mm. Uh, but they didn't seem to matter. But uh, So I, I'm running at about, I don't know, a third to a quarter of the uh, lighting that I normally would do in there. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, Which worked. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask, James, I mean, do, do is it the case that none of the animals can see that infrared at all? Uh, no. Uh, birds can't see infrared because uh, uh, only... You, there's only certain animals that can actually see infrared and uh, none of the ones we get in this garden actually are worried about infrared. But I presume that infrared being close to the heat in, in the spectrum of things, I mean, it will generate a little bit of heat. So I presume that's quite a nice thing for most animals to help them nest. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you saw, we get the red light a little bit. And uh, I think the blue tits in the tree, the sorry, great tits in the tree, because uh, we had great tits nesting in the tree, whereas in this bird box we had blue tits. So we got a mixture of both worlds. Mm. But uh, the great tits, when they first went in there, did have a look up actually at the red lights a few times and realised they weren't moving and they weren't a problem. So um, they moved in, thankfully. Yeah. Good, excellent. All right, well, let's yeah. continue with the tour. Thanks for giving us all that information about no, you're the right. cameras. Uh, we've got another one up there. Um, the, the wireless access point doesn't normally sit on top of my CCTV camera, <laughs> but we were having, uh, when we did a test earlier, we were getting Wi Fi issues right down at the bottom of the garden. So I quickly chucked that out of the garage so we could get a better signal. Please so, don't uh, forget that tonight, mate. <laughs> to put that <laughs> away. <laughs> Well, it even it's not going to rain tonight, but even then, uh, the things are. Uh, we've got a camera above the top. It's different to the other ones, and I'll show you the one on the front of the uh, house as well in a second. But uh, it's a Logitech camera, and it works with Apple's HomeKit, which is Apple's secure camera network. Okay. So uh, w works a little bit different from the fact that. Um, it can detect people. Apple actually records it onto their servers for you and everything. And uh, when when somebody walks in front of it that it knows, um, it tries to work out who it is and it'll tell you who it is. So uh, we've got another one up here. Same for the front door, just to let us know who's been uh, working there. Let's uh, I'll just take a quick... So that's a Logitech, you there. said? Logitech, yeah. Oh. And... Uh, that's even got a little infrared light. As you can and we see can the see the spider. My, my wife next to me is just freaking out by the spider. <laughs> oh, sorry. They are the bane of my life, spiders. They seem to... Uh, and there's a second camera, which still works on, obviously, our normal system. So I've right. got two cameras on the front door. So uh, I can catch you from both angles if you sneak up one day. <laughs> and uh, Yes, well... No, I mean, so I think what this is also, of course, highlighting is... Although a lot of the pictures that you've shown us, <clears throat> excuse me, in Narc Live have been for the wildlife, um, it does show that lots of them are used as a security aid as well, which I guess is the same for other people at home now maybe thinking of putting some cameras in. You know, it's a great use to sort of share the use, both looking at um, wildlife and, um, and also acting as a security deterrent. And should the worst happen, someone get near, then you've got their, you know, details of their number plate and uh, other details as well. Yeah, I mean, that's where the camera started in the first place. It was on the front door to start off with. And uh, then uh, obviously at the back door, and it's kind of expanded from there. When we got down in lockdown last year, 
Uh, we found delight in watching the wildlife and the cameras added and added. Uh, we've had sort of issues of herons coming down to the pond and otters, unfortunately, um, that uh, unfortunately ate some of our fish. Well, a good portion of our fish, unfortunately. But uh, that is nature, isn't it, unfortunately? So uh, the cameras are sort of grown to sort of let us know what's happening and see if we can sort of uh, keep an eye on things. So I think that's... A, the light's disappearing. Yes. I think we've covered everything outside. I think we have. We've been I so lucky, haven't we? And I think we've just got a little video clip just of um, uh, what a notification that appears on an iPad because obviously uh, I'm an Apple person, so that's the angle I'm coming from. But uh, I think if you'd like to just play that and uh, we'll catch you in a little while later. That's right, James. So we're just going to play this now and we'll be joining James and Lynn later on. But have a look at this video. Just a short video with the uh, the notification. notification. It's so just if you're... to show that the um, mm. it comes up as an alert on your uh, on your iPad or your phone to say that someone's at the back door. So it's detected when you're not there. And that's the one from those Logitech cameras, I think. Yeah, well, that's right. I can see that James and Nin are now going in, um, and while they're getting ready to show us the more of the detail about how these things connect up and how you can set them up and everything else. So I know this is what uh, you want. And by the way, tonight was all about a question of a couple of people who saw our wildlife uh, special earlier in the year and they asked us, could they possibly see James's garden and how, it, how he did it? So that's why we're doing tonight. It's all about, uh, you know, smart home, but in particular about the cameras and things and how to set them up. So well, while James and Lynn get set up inside their house and we're so blessed with that weather, aren't we, the, the, the light, uh, we're just going to tell you our, a few bits of uh, club news now. Only three bits of news this week. Firstly, we'd like to show you uh, pictures from West Runton. Now, if you hopefully got the newsletter last week, only on Friday, I know, a very short notice, our uh, own Jim G3YLA called me on Friday morning and said, actually, the weather has changed and this Sunday looks like a brilliant start to some warm weather. So if we could arrange it, let's do Radio by the Seaside this Sunday. And boy... How right was he? Let's have a look at some of the pictures, Tammy. That uh, These are ones I took. If you took some pictures there, then please do share them with us and we'll put them on the club gallery on the website very shortly. There you can just see Andy on the right there with his dog and then Mark sitting down. He'd set up a, a radio station there. It may not look like a lot, but actually I counted nearly 30 cars at the end. There's several masts, if you have a look at that picture closely. And we were taking up that space all the way along there, right to the end and then round to the left because we ran out of space. So, I mean, Radio by the Seaside is something that we've done in this club since 2004. So it really is quite a tradition. Um, but let's have a look at some more of the pictures anyway. Uh, there's Mark running his uh, QRP station, completely independent of uh, power or anything like that. It's got a little lithium battery pack there, a KX2 that was. Lovely. There's, uh, there's um, Lorna and um, Nev and I, I all I can think of is wrong direction. It's Ben. Ben, isn't it? Isn't it? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong direction. He's, he's, uh, Scout Labs is really good for they to join. To be honest, I was so busy chatting with people in, during the day that we didn't get pictures of everybody. So I apologise if you came and I've missed you. Please forgive me. We've got there on the left, we've got John, 20TWK. We've got Malcolm, I think, there, G3PDH. We've got Jim. Bacon G3 Wiley, he's responsible for the weather. What a what a day! What a fantastic change of uh, weather for us. And on the right there, we've got Steve G0 KYA. We're setting up. There's Andy and Laura. Isn't it great to see people again. There's John again. He's just packing everything away. I was too late to get pictures of his <laughs> setup, unfortunately. Never mind. So I'm afraid these do look like holiday snaps, but they that's do, what they don't are. Don't they? But it's a nice it? blue sky. So it that's was. The main it thing. was lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who have we got there? We've got Bob on the left. And I think that's Mike, that's Mike isn't he? He was I our think. guest the other week on Not Live. Yes, Mike um, from uh, North Orwick. On the right-hand side, sitting down, is another Mike. That's Mike, M7 yeah. MCO, MCO, I think. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's... Um, that's Mike from, uh, Mike from Kingsden, Kingsden Club. Kingsden. Yeah, yep. opposite there. Mm -hmm. And that's a Neil. He was setting up there with his van, or maybe packing up at that moment, actually. Just see the skies. There's Bob. Uh, sorry, Paul. G3 VPT, and on the right of him is uh, Bob's other half as well. I think they all did very well. <laughs> There's Colin and his wife Jenny's car. 
Is our car there as well? Anyway. I don't think that's Colin's car. Oh, wasn't it? No, that's okay. We'll forgive okay. you. All right. And that's Mike's car. <laughs> Colin and Jenny were there, though. It's nice to that's see right. them. That's right, yeah. So I say these are just some of the snaps I took. Yeah. Now, as well as these still pictures, and I say again, apologies if I missed you, we've got this little video. Have a look at this. If we were treated to our own personal air show, and I took this with just my iPhone, but have a look at this. Hopefully at home you can see, look at this. He was going a bit crazy, wasn't he? You could almost think that's a radio control plane, but it wasn't. It was real, I assure you. Look at that. There, you think he's disappearing, and it just comes up again. Incredible just to think that's on my phone. Yep. Great, but it? wasn't it great? Can't believe he's doing well. all those things. It's just no. weird. It's so a we real have our treat own for people. <laughs> personal air show. Now, if you did miss it, we were at West Runton on North Norfolk Coast. It's a beautiful place. Um, don't always get an air show like this, but there's a cafe and toilets and things nearby, and it's just a wonderful place that traditionally we've met. Until last year, we'd met every year, as I said, since 2004. Now, if we're blessed with some nice weather in a few weeks' time, we might go and do it again. So keep an eye on the newsletter. I've got our weatherman, Jim Bacon, who's going to be keeping an eye on the weather for us and letting us know if in two or three weeks' time we get a sort of an Indian summer, as certainly this seems to be, then hopefully we might be able to go and do that again. And so if you didn't join us on Sunday, then hopefully you might be able to join us if we do this a bit later in the year. Anyway, thanks again for all those who supported it. I said uh, nearly 30 cars, um, I reckon, you know, 40 or 50 people there, which is brilliant. And all safe and social distance, lots of fresh air and everything else. Great to see you all. Now, I'd just like to tell you now about uh, Radio by the Seaside. Um, no, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just We're lost because the there's a picture that's missing, unfortunately, and maybe it didn't make it to you. Um, but anyway, um, Railway's on the air on the 25th and 26th of September. Now, it's something that the club has done for several years. Um, but unfortunately, of course, we couldn't do it last year. And I'm not sure if we can or if we should or consider doing it this year. But I was asked at the weekend. This is the pictures from one in 2019. But I, a couple of people have asked me, are we doing it? And it's in a few weeks' time. Now, I must say, at this point, we haven't done any planning. We haven't asked any Railway. Uh, this was from the Mid-Norfolk Railway, which we've been doing the last few years. But should we do that? If you're interested and you would like to do it, it is obviously, as you can see from that, something we can do outside, then please drop me an email. It's the only way I'm going to be able to respond to it, really. Drop me an email if it's something that you'd like to be involved with. It's the 25th and 26th September. We'll have a look at the risks involved. We'll also, of course, talk to the railway and see if that's something that they would be happy for. It comes to the Mid-Norfolk before they're getting the Flying Scotsman in October, so it might be something that we'll join. Anyway, that's it for that for the moment. We're going to add an extra picture on the newsletter. But don't worry, it didn't make it over. Don't worry, Tammy. Let's have a look at your little people. Are we going to little people? Actually, can I just, I'll tell you what, I will mention it. Sunny M0SYW sent me a picture of a coffee jar um, uh, yesterday, I think. Um, it's a Dow Egbert's coffee jar, which is one of the ones with the plug-in top, a push-in top. If you happen to drink Dow Edward's coffee, I know this sounds very random, could you save the jars, please, for Sonny? As you know, Sonny and Charlotte are getting married, um, and I think this is something to do with one of their table de decorations. We did have a picture of a jar, but I'm afraid it didn't make it over here. You told me Kenko jar earlier. It wasn't, it wasn't it a wasn't Kenko, a Kenko no, jar, Dow that's Egbert's. okay then. Dow Egbert's. Just checking. We happen to use them here, so we've got a few jars. If you happen to use Dow Egbert's coffee, please don't throw away the jars. Can you save them for us or for Sunny, more, more exactly, and we'll pass them on to you. Just drop us an email and we'll put you in touch with Sunny. Sorry it didn't make this uh, slide deck, but we've had quite a lot of planning to do this afternoon with Lynn and James. For this that's my excuse anyway. that's your excuse okay but tammy let's go over to your little, little people. people well i thought the little people this week had to be a camera theme you see so All right. uh, i took a picture earlier of james um you know cleaning the lenses yes getting rid of the spiders <laughs> Get rid oh. of the spiders so that's the little people this week although it's obviously a proper camera that, that looks one. like a very slim james <laughs> and i haven't seen lynn in that yellow holding penny? A, no in a yellow <laughs> penny with a bucket like that either but anyway <laughs> that's a lovely isn't it great though just the imagination showing simple picture, couple of characters. It is a very simple picture, isn't it? Yeah, but that sometimes less is more. Mm. Miniature-calendar.com. That's where we get those pictures from every week. Thanks, Tammy, for that. 
Anyway, just to let, just to remind you to please get in touch and keep us in touch with what you're doing. I know lots of people now going away, maybe even a little holiday or something like that. But we do rely on your pictures and your stories for this part of the program in particular. So please let us know. And if you've got any ideas for talks or any other presentations or anything like that as well, we really would love to hear from you. Um, you know, I've said this before, but it wouldn't mind me saying it again. You know, we never had any idea when we sat and did this in March 2020 that we'd be doing it uh, a good 18 months or so later. But we're gonna be carrying on for most of the, the winter with this, I guess, for you. But we do want to keep it a club, keeping people in touch for the club. So we'd love to hear from you. If you just take an odd picture or something like that, um, you know, so, some story just to keep in touch, we would love to see them. Radio at dcpmicro.com is the address to send to us at the bottom of your screens now. Just send us that and we would love to include it on the show. Thank you. Now, round to the competition. I thought, oh, we must mention the card. Do I mention the card at this point? I think I do. This is the card that we have, uh, I'll just hand it under camera one here. This sorry. Is the card. Oh, just, sorry, Tammy. Right. I know I'll... you're busy tonight. Uh, you're busy okay. every night. But anyway, this is the card that we're very happy to send to anybody who you think would like a card from the club to cheer them up. And we'll be very happy to send that to anybody at all. Just again, drop us the details of their address and the reason for the card to that email address. Tammy. Yep. Let's have a look at the competition. Okay. We launched a new competition a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen us for a few weeks, then this in replaces the shack. And this is what we call it. It's called, What on Earth is This? Now, I can tell you now that this came from John G0MXN, who sent us this picture. And we only had two we guesses. Have, we have had a couple of guesses, actually. Have we? Okay. Um, on here. Let me just have a well, look. Well, while you find those, I'm going to tell you about the people who wrote to us and told us. So Peter M0HBL said, I think it's a cable tidy. I use one to wrap my USB cables around. Yeah, I think I can see. I can do that around the outside. Um, and Peter M0VRA said, this object is a cable tidy. I've got a few of them, but no longer use them as they seem to make the cable more rigid, possibly through work hardening, which is an interesting thing with copper. If you, if you work, hard, work harden, um, or work metals rather, they can get hard. Hmm. Like that. Anyway, but... Uh, um, we've had a few extra guesses. Um, I think maybe it might have been your plug earlier. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> they only get half a point. So uh, Mike G-A-E-Y says... Uh, 13 amp question mark. What is that for my plug? It's for your plug. Right, okay. Steve G3 EVA says, is it a cable winder and a 13 amp plug holder? And then uh, Stuart M0 JKB, is that yeah, right? Yeah, well done, yeah. Uh, it's a, is it a wire netting a holder? A wire netting holder. Yeah, I can see how that might work. Um, Anybody on the other side? And then Richard M6 UES, is the thing a cable tidy with a slot in the front for a 13, 13 amp, amp plug? plug. And, and then Tony M0 TDK says, is it a thing for storing electric UK three pin plugs? I think the plug thing may help. I think you may bit, have plugged the plug. It's okay. Well, they only get half a point, but those two wrote in. Anyway, let's see what it does and what it is with the X picture. Yes, indeed, it was a cable tidy. I don't know if there's a special name for something like that, but um, John sent us those pictures of his TomTom -tom charger there, plugged into it and wraps the cable. Really neat, but I was intrigued by Peter's comment that it might actually make the cables harder and more brittle, yeah. um, possibly. So that's interesting. Anyway, and uh, John did say to us as well, this only costs 20 pence and it's really useful for storing all those cables that you have trailing around. That might have been 20 pence a while ago, though, I suspect. Well, maybe. maybe. But anyway, it's still very good. Thank you very much, John, for sending us that. And a good time to remind, a good plug, actually, to remind you as well. I bet you've all got gadgets at home that you're not, you know, you know what they do, but a lot of people wouldn't know. Those gadgets, I mentioned it on the newsletter, the KTEL, the Roncos, all those things from the 70s, which Tammy won't remember. But you will at home, all those gadgets that looked weird but did wonderful things then please send us some pictures like this because uh, we can feature them on this competition it, what's obvious to you won't be obvious to others and talking of which let's see for this week what on earth is this now i could see actually james and then they call it they put their thumbs up they know yeah. if you know this is easy but if you don't know it's not does that make sense have a look at that there. Now, as I said, if you've seen one of these gadgets, I'm not gonna say what it is, you will know. 
but there will be a lot of people I bet who don't. Otherwise, we should get about 300. Yeah, I'm not actually <laughs> sure what it you is. You don't know what honest. it is, do you? No. 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 So look, what do you think this is? What on earth is this? Let us know. Answers to radio at dcpmicro.com by three o'clock next Wednesday, and you'll get a mention on the show, whether you get it right or wrong. Mm. But it is an interesting gadget. Gadget. Or thing, or, or tool, thing. or whatever it is. All right. Okay. That's it. We'll be putting that on the newsletter, of course, and uh, also on Facebook and on our website as well. So next Wednesday, three o'clock, please enter. Tell us what you think that is. Just to let you know then what's happening on the club next week. We've got uh, the GB Tourist News read by Mike G4DYC on, mon on Sunday sorry, at 7 o'clock on GB3NB. On Monday the 13th of September, it's our Monday night net at half past seven. We haven't got a host yet. Now I'm not sure if uh, maybe Steve's coming back to that or maybe you'd like to have a go at that. We've had guest hosts for the last six weeks to give Steve a break, a well-earned break. So if you would like to host the Monday Night Net, then please let us know and we'll put you in touch. It's very, very easy to do. It's just on GB3MB at half past seven every Monday. At half past eight, it's the 80 meter CW Net. And next Wednesday, the 15th of September, I have to say firstly, a apology if you happen to look and find out what you thought was happening next Wednesday. We've had a, a last minute cancellation, but we did have something in line for that. And I'm pleased to say, that you know the Olympics and the Paralympics have just finished in Tokyo. We've got something perfect to show you in, uh, in the place of what we were gonna cover because um, the London Olympics, as you all remember, I'm sure, were in 2012 and there was a special event station called 2012L. What a brilliant call sign that is. And that was run by the Cray Valley Radio Society and they made this, if I could just show it on camera one, Tammy, for a moment, they made this wonderful DVD and normally they're still selling this DVD, but they've given us permission to actually show that next week. The only catch is that we won't be putting up a recording of the show because they don't, understandably, they don't want a, a recording of this going on, um, not, on, uh, on to uh, YouTube. So if you want to watch that next week, I hope you'll join us for that. You'll need to watch it live because you won't be able to catch up with it afterwards. But they had over 41,000 QSOs, and setting up that station is going to be a bit of a different... Uh, you know, we've seen de-expeditions set up for special events, but this is something different. This was set up in and around London in a very busy time, at a time as well where lots of communications were going to be putting in place for all of the broadcasters and all of the security that was needed for the games. So there's a lot of challenges. It's a fascinating video. It's 45 minutes long, and we'll be showing it exclusively here on Nark Live next week, half past seven, live only. You won't be able to catch up later on. And finally, I'd just like to tell you about something we're going to do in a few weeks' time. Um, with this wonderful weather, actually this week I must confess that a member sent us some lovely pictures of some butterflies. And he may be thinking, I wonder why they didn't show those. Well, it got us thinking that with the pictures from James, the pictures we took at West Runton, and those butterflies that were sent to us, it would be great to have a sort of photography, not a competition, but just a display of the photographs that you've got. Now, we've done wildlife specials before, and of course there's nothing to stop you sending us pictures of wildlife, but we thought it would be rather nice to just open that up to anything. So if you've got a lovely picture of a sunset or a sunrise or anything like that, look at this. I mean, this is one of the pictures, for example. This is yours, isn't it, Tammy? Yeah. I didn't actually know you were going to show that. Oh, did you not? No, that's beautiful. And that sort of picture we thought we would share with a photography night. It can be video photography as well. So you can send us videos. I don't see why not. Or still for photographs. Does anybody still use film? Maybe. Maybe there are still great advantages of that. That's out the back of our, our place here. Anyway, we would look forward. So start thinking about those pictures. If you haven't taken any recently, then please take some. They don't have to be recent pictures, though. No, can they, they don't. They can no, just be your favourite right. pictures, pictures you've taken in the past, anything yep. like that. It would be nice to see. Absolutely. And the only thing we ask is they must be your own. Please don't send us pictures from other people uh, because it's, it's your copyright and you're going to give us permission to show it here. And that's the only thing. Classic cars. I mean, I've written down other notes here of things that you could take. Even pictures of your radios or something like that. We would love to see them. So start collecting those pictures together. Yeah. And one really other good. thing I'd just like to mention as well is uh, for those of you who joined in the fox hunt, we're going to be doing another friendly fox hunt on Sunday the 19th of September. Now, this is not going to be televised 
and it's only really so it's only going to be for the people who'd like to do uh, direction finding fox hunts but um, th this is the last outing for the current foxes before the new foxes take over next year this is a f purely a friendly on a Sunday morning and we'll end up hopefully somewhere where we can uh, meet later on and maybe have a, a nice meal outside if the weather is as good as it is now. Well, it is weather permitting, I think, though, isn't it? It is weather the, permitting. Uh, yeah. But if you're interested in that and we haven't already contacted you, you I'll be automatically sending details to those of you who've, who've taken part in the other fox hunts that we've had this year. But if you are interested, uh, there's just drop us an email and I'll include you on the list when we've got the full details. But it's Sunday the 19th of September. I need to dust off my... Uh my equipment because I haven't used that. it this year. Yep, you're not going to be in the studio. This to say this won't be televised, but it does give Tammy and Katie and uh, and who else? Steph. Steph is your team to have a go at it as yep. well. As long as I don't have to do because I'm useless. <laughs> you, you did think about taking me along as well, didn't you? But yeah, but it's not a good idea. I, there's a reason why I sort of organise it and see everybody <laughs> off is because I'm no good at it myself. <laughs> anyway, that's all to come. Now, let's get back to tonight's main event, though. I'm sure it's dark out there now, but uh, inside it's not dark. We've got Lynn and James. We're going to go back to you now. Let's have a look at you. Here we are. Hello. So thanks Hi. very much. From your home, your very smart home in South Norfolk. <laughs> now, can you tell us now, James and Lynn, about how you connect up all those things and how you set them up? So we can, but um, while the moment's here, he's turned up a little bit early. I don't know if Tammy can actually oh, no. change to my iPad screen. Yeah, yep. that's the one Hold with the on uh, date me, in the I'll corner. Just come to us. Just let me. Uh... Oh my goodness! I could see something. You're going to love to see this at home. <laughs> you know yeah. that camera we showed? I can't believe it. Hang on, I just got to unpin. Just okay, we have a little me. bit of uh, right. wizardry pokery here, here to do. Here we go. Look there we at go. that. He's having a hunt to see what all the birds are left him during the daytime. See, that's under your and bird squirrels. table, isn't it? That is at the bottom of the bird table, yeah. Fantastic. That is as live as you get. 2014 and 29 seconds. That is bang on time as well. Oh, it's yeah. two. It's two. Um, it's two? Lynn? Lynn? No, it's two. No, sorry, Lynn's thing in the shadow. But that's <laughs> not... Well, there may be some later. We're obviously so. going to be with you for some time now, James, anyway, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> to look at that. But obviously, if at any time, especially if he goes near, what is it called? Boss Diner. Boss's Boss Diner. Hogs Diner. Boss Hogs Boss Diner. Boss Hogs Diner. Do let us know, because I think people will be intrigued as to, as to how you made that dining diner for the, the uh, hedgehogs <laughs> that's bird proof as well, or cat proof. And anyway, you won't say that too many times. No, definitely not. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we've found, anyway, we've seen all your cameras set up. They're connected either, yeah. some of them wirelessly, weren't they? Some of them by uh, connections. Oh, oh look at him go. Disappeared suddenly. <laughs> oh, they, um, do, they look, move look, fast, don't they? And they don't hang about. Um, uh, the automatic watering's him. just come on, and I think that's what you oh, heard. scared oh. him, is it? That, that scared him. Yeah, he's a little bit earlier than normal, I guess. Uh, the uh, earlier nights are bringing them along earlier again. So let's, <laughs> as you say, we'd better um, move on to... Uh, I'll just pop behind Lynn here a second. Right, if you could swap to my um, camera phone. Is that possible, Your phone? Tammy? Yep, hold on. I went to the wrong That's one there. It. Just bear with me. Okay, well done, Tammy. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I can see what's happening here. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've uh, given you too many feeds, haven't I? That's all right, don't worry. There we go. I thought you were right, the one who had too go. many feeds, but anyway, I mustn't say that. I, wasn't really <laughs> into, I, guess. <laughs> I bet Lynn's yeah, laughing okay. at that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Lynn cooks, I eat. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, right, PTZ camera. This is a dome type, so the camera's actually sitting underneath the dome inside. But the same principle as the other ones you saw outside. Um, obviously, we've got power in, just a normal power pack, 12 volts into there. And in this, we've got an Ethernet connection. Now, when you're first setting one of these up, it's a lot easier to plug it into your router with an Ethernet cable. Uh, you can obviously... Uh, set once you've set it all up you can set it up for wi-fi and then unplug it later on but it makes so much more for easiness do plug in this is standard rj45 ethernet cable that you use for your networking plug in you know um, uh, your television in or uh, whatever you uh, have in your household anyway so 
My J45 network socket goes in there. And the other one's literally just a reset button in case you do need to reset the camera. But uh, I've never really that much had a need to uh, access that, to be honest with you, unless you want to start all over again. So uh, that's on to there. Now, I think, uh, well, there's a little setup video, if we can just run that. And um, I'll just talk you through how you actually set one up. Obviously, with me, everything uh, is Apple. But um, the program we're going to use, which is called Cam High, which is used on a lot of these ca um, cameras, uh, is actually available on iOS and uh, Android. So uh, it covers most platforms. Right, here we go. You start the program up. Uh, if you notice at the top, there's a white bar that says add camera. It's as simple as that. So you will click on that. You can then search cameras from LAN, which is your network. This is a plugged into your network. So we click on that. That'll do a search and come up with your camera. So we just need to literally clip on, click on that. Then we'll call it something. So we'll call it camera one, uh, just to make it easy. And we'll just save that. Right. It's now reconnecting to the camera. Yep, we've connected. So that's lovely. So we can now go into it. Now, obviously, it's on the default password. And for security, we want to change that. And that's why they're giving you a little warning there saying, please change your password. So uh, we go into the settings, change your password. Um, the security doesn't come up with the typing. So uh, we punch the old password in, which is the normal default admin, as most cameras are. And the new password, you have to type in twice just to make sure you uh, did type it right in the first place. And we'll just click apply at the bottom there. And it will now, obviously, we change the password. The program even knows you've changed the password, so it updates the password for the program, and we're there. So we can now go into the settings. We're there. Uh, and there's a few, we'll go down a few of these menus. So motion detection. Some of the cameras will actually send you a notification to your phone or to your iPad telling you that there's motion. Uh, some of them will even allow you to select a little box in the area that, uh, so you can, you know, if you've got some flowers waving about. Um, and also there's a menu then, what do I do if you want sort of uh, me to do motion detection? Do you want me to send you an alert? Do you want me to send you an email? And in this menu, you can set all those up. Yeah. So we'll come out of that one. James, so if you don't mind, yep. um, I just want to mention to anybody at home, if you've got any questions or anything, you can ask them at any time on Facebook or BATC. That last menu there, you can see, uh, is your recording. So all these cameras that I use take an SD card and it will record to the SD card. That was the last menu we were in and uh, allow you to uh, then download the pictures you can have it actually record just on motion or you can have a recording all the time in fairness with my love of animals i have here is the wi-fi section so it doesn't have to be plugged into a network all the time you can actually select your network that you want it to connect to and do a scan tap on whichever one you want to go into and at that point you type in your password for that network and uh, once you have hit apply then obviously uh, you could then get rid of the uh, network cable and just literally power it with 12 volts outside. And uh, that's just uh, showing there's an SD card in there and how much of it has been used. So a very simple program to use. Um, mind you, everything's simple after you've used it a few times, isn't it? So, uh, and I'm... Uh, all right. Oh, time, yes. As they're um, Chinese cameras, um, a lot of the time they're set on Chinese time. So you just have to go into the time menu, select where you are in the world. Obviously, most of us will actually be in the UK. So that will be London. And uh, turn on daylight saving time because we're obviously uh, in the summer for a little bit longer. And uh, just hit save. And it's just saying that obviously it needs to reboot because we're changing the time of the camera. So, uh, 
and um, a couple of minutes later, your camera will be rebooted and you're there. Hmm. Uh, uh, James, just remind us again what that program's called. Cam High. So C A M H I. C A M H I. And that yeah. is on available. You were using it on a, an iPad, but it's also available on Android tablets as well, isn't it? Yeah, so, Android as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a, a lot of the cameras use that. Um, I think it's a very good. They're, they're forever updating it. So uh, that's a sign of a good app. Um, has got a couple of little drawbacks when you get to landscape and uh, portrait modes. Uh, on the whole, you know, it's free. Um, so you don't have to pay any more for that particular camera. There's other programs you can use to view it, but for setting up your camera, uh, download it and use it if you've got an Android or an iOS device. So, mm. uh, there was something that you mentioned there, actually, when you are going through the setting up, which I don't think either of us mentioned when you were looking around the garden because we were so desperate to get round before <laughs> the light failed, didn't we? Um, and, and that was the SD card because some of these cameras, or maybe all of them, do also have a slot for an SD card so they can store pictures inside. That's right, isn't it? Yes, I, I actually, uh, at the moment, I can actually show you. I've got the inside of one of these cameras here. So, um, infrared lights on the front. Actually, if I can, let's see how clever I can be. I've got or to give not. Tammy a chance to get the right picture. Oh, yes, that's lovely. Yeah. Right, this one, then. right. Uh, just make sure this is in focus, right? So, you can see your lens at the front there, uh, infrared LEDs around the outside that obviously only turn on at night time. Actually at the bottom of there, I don't know if you can see, that is the light sensor. So that will actually detect whether it's light or dark and turn these on or off. We were talking about a uh, SD card and at the back there, uh, just down the bottom there where my finger is, I don't know if it's coming through well, yes, too just well. Little, just see that little slot, yeah. yeah. Just so do you have to SD. take the whole camera apart to put the SD card in then? Uh, no, there's normally just a little... Hang on, let me just see if I can focus in on this a bit better. There's uh, normally a little flap that's held in with either two or four screws and you just undo that flap and uh, put your card in there and uh, you're away. And like most SD cards, you just push it in or click in and stay in. And then to remove it, you push it in and it'll pop out again. Mm. So, um, uh, what, you, you mentioned several makes as you were going around, and we're going to mention a few others that other people have um, it, have uh, written about as well on Facebook and on BATC. What make was this camera? Uh, right, um, I use now SV3Cs. I used to use Florian, um, but uh, they don't support um, uh, the video formats I want anymore. They're all online and that sort of thing. So uh, I've moved across as such, but. I would say, personally myself, you know, it's uh, any sort of uh, camera that sort of supports cam high uh, would be down my street. But, you know, it's different horses for courses, if you know what I mean. I, w I will point one other thing out with this camera. You know, obviously in the bird box and in the tree, uh, with the tree camera, I obviously took one of these apart. Hmm. And there's a little foam thing here. And I don't know if you can see that camera module there. I don't know if it's too easy to see that it's actually threaded. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's the lens itself, is it? Threaded, yeah? That is the lens itself here. Yeah. And just at the back there, there's a thread that leads into there. Now, I've no, I thought all cameras actually had the thread on where you can actually turn it slightly. It is quite stiff and it will adjust the focus of the camera. So if you want it for close work, you can actually adjust the focus so it's actually focusing in on closer stuff. Yep, James, but, actually, uh, could I, I just add a little note there? Do you mind? Um, yeah. If you look at it no, sideways course. again, if you have a look, you can see a little screw that's on the side of the housing of their camera. And if you release that screw, if you turn it around one more, about 90 degrees, yeah, you could just see that little screw at the top there. I can tell you that I'm pretty sure that screw is locking the thread. So if you release that screw, you can then unjust, adjust it. Maybe I'm telling you something you didn't know yourself, but um, you, you can adjust the, the lens easier then and then tighten the screw up. And in fact, the cameras that people bought that we had 80 of in the club recently, that's exactly the same. And that's got a little tiny screw in there as well. And that help, holds the lens in position. But um, yeah, I have found though on some modern cameras, 
they are fixed and you can't really? adjust them. Yeah, the one that I've got in the bird box is fixed. And uh, I'd like to have swapped that out for another camera, but the birds moved in so fast hmm. um, that uh, I won't I won't go disturb birds. Um, you know, if they were nice enough to come and nest, then uh, <laughs> what was there was good enough for me. Absolutely, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. So well, uh, this uh, pop me back to me now. Uh, so oh, um, I don't know if Tammy wants to just swap to my outside camera again, but um, they must have heard about you. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe we're this hogs. lucky. She's going yeah. to come to us again. I can't believe we're this lucky because we were going to play some videos. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so we now now at home. If you're watching this, this is live from James and Lynn's garden in South Norfolk, and we're now going to their garden where we saw the camera. And there's two of there's them. There's two of them. There's two of them. Yeah. Do you think he's going to make it over to the Hogs Diner? Oh, they, they normally like to have a run around and see what's hanging at the bottom of the bird table first. And uh, they normally uh, hop into Hogs Diner later on. It's a sort of like their supper time. Oh, well, make sure you do tell us if, uh, if they <laughs> yeah. make it over there and we'll, we'll quickly go but, to them. Uh, but uh, as, as I say, you know, hedgehogs have been in the decline for the last sort of... Uh, 10 or 15 years unfortunately and uh, mm. you know his natural food is getting rarer and rarer for him so uh, you know if you can put some out then uh, it's wonderful please do so I mean uh, all the you know some cat, dry cat biscuits that's all you need um, they don't want expensive stuff they're not posh yeah <laughs> and um, as I say the only thing I'd say to avoid um, would be um, fish based cat food because uh, it uh, does tend to make um, what comes out of the hedgehogs a little bit more smelly yeah? right okay <laughs> well brilliant well let's come back to you then and, and look a bit more at this yeah, setting up so so Just far we've seen us, how yeah. to set up um, some of the cameras with the software so you've set your camera yeah. up and now yeah. you're anxiously going to watch for your pictures and also work out maybe how you go well actually th there's one other thing obviously I, I understand that everybody doesn't have an Android or uh, an iOS device. So these cameras, you can uh, do actually have a web interface as well. Just like you go to a web page on the internet, you can go to your camera as a uh, web page. And I think we've got just a short little video just showing you can do the same to that. You'd obviously have to find out the IP address, which is chosen by your camera. And obviously that is given out by your router uh, using a method called DHCP, which you know, uh, either you can contact me another day and I'll explain that more to that. But uh, we're about cameras today rather than network and as such. But uh, I'm willing to help anybody. So uh, we just log in again to our camera. This is just a normal web browser, Safari, you know, uh, Explorer, anything like that. It comes up in Chinese to start off with. It is a Chinese camera. We can select English in the corner. PC view. Now, on my Mac, obviously, you would normally get your camera view there in that window. But on my Mac, I don't. Uh, on a PC, you would. And there you've got all your settings that you can adjust your camera levels in. Um, here we go. And uh, if you want it brighter, a bit more contrast or anything like that. Uh, using the web interface, you do get a little bit more uh, than you would using Cam High. Uh, you can name, put in the corner of the camera the name that you'd like to call it. Uh, in this case, camera one, we called it, didn't we? Click apply and you're away. And, you, you know, if you've got any network ports that you want to change numbers for or anything like that, then obviously uh, you can change your ports and networks. And, net, you know, a network port, just briefly, is just uh, like 80 is the standard number for uh, a web page port or that sort of thing. And... Uh, you can mess around those. If you want to fix the IP address of your camera so it doesn't move about, you can change it from D, uh, DC, DCHP uh, to a fixed IP, put in your values there, just click apply, and it won't change again. What I would say is, though, choose a number that your router doesn't issue. Otherwise, if you choose a number that's fixed for that camera, another day your router's going to give something else like your phone and your iPad that number. So uh, find out what numbers um, it gives out, IP addresses. IP addresses um, are a bit like telephone numbers uh, for networking. So um, 
and uh, find out which ones your router gives out. Some of them give out between sort of, I don't know, five and 100 is the in bits and choose something a little bit higher, like uh, 120 or something like that. So uh, your router won't ever allocate that number. Hmm. So, uh, okay, that, so, uh, so that's that was, that was direct connection to just to, just so people at home explain uh, explain to them that that web page was generated by the camera itself, so you can connect it to virtually any computer, whatever it's using, and actually look at that web page and set the camera up. Whether it's using Windows, Linux, or whatever, okay, uh, you can connect to that web page and set it up that way. Great. So, um, right, um, we've seen how to set it up. We've seen sort of. Uh, uh, everything there. Um, shall we have a look at sort of uh, playing around with uh, mm. one of these? So web again, a reminder to everybody at home now, and we've got a couple of comments. Um, if you would like to uh, ask any questions of James um, or make any comments or anything that you've got maybe as a system or anything, then um, do that either on BATC or on Facebook and we'll relay them to James. Somebody who's done that actually while James is just setting up uh, something now. Um, James M0JGX says, uh, High K Vision do color view cameras that can see in full color in near pitch black without needing any infrared, he says. I don't know if you've heard of that, make Ooh. HK no. High K Vision, he's called it. Oh, right. I'll have to Google that and read a bit about it then. Yeah. I'd say it might be handy for seeing hedgehogs in the uh, dark. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd see the color as well, I guess, is the. Is the yeah. point about it is that you actually see them in colour. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. Okay. It's worthwhile looking into. Um, right. I don't know if you want to just pop to my iPad screen, the one with the uh, time running in the top right hand corner again. Yep. Just bear with me a sec. Right. We've got a few channels coming in, you see, from James. So um, it takes a little while just to get the right channel and put into our video mixer so that you can home can see it. And that's what Tammy's busy doing. There we are. We're back to you. Oh, I'm very demanding, aren't I? <laughs> so um, that was that was that camera in the uh, corner that we obviously was looking at the network connections. That's showing uh, Lynn and myself over there, as you can see. And uh, uh, obviously uh, using this program, which this isn't Cam High, because Cam High does not like landscape for video. So I thought this was a little bit easier to show you. Um, if we bring that... Um, I should say it shows you in landscape, but it doesn't share it in landscape from an Apple device for some reason. It's got to be some weird kind of bug. But anyway, uh, we're here. But if I want to uh, just pop on that, it's on a preset. It's a um, fixed position that I programmed into last time. So now we're looking, at a, we're looking at a pan, aren't we? And, and a, a sort of zoom in there, very quick zoom in. Yeah. Now, I'd asked it to sort of go to that position and that zoom, and I'd preset that under number two, so you can actually uh, get a good look at my. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, there you go. No, <laughs> did no. that autom? I mean, we saw it focus. Then did that do that automatically, or were you doing that, James? No, don't have to touch it. It will automatically focus itself. So, uh, and uh, if I click on number three again, that was the position we were at in the first place. Uh, you can obviously manually zoom in or zoom out if you want, uh, as you can see by the uh, the icons overlaid, and at right, and at left. As you can see, this is my attempt at being sort of uh, like David Studio, but uh, a <laughs> fraction of it. Yeah. So we're looking now. And so if it, just for everybody at home, I just want to make clear because they may not see it quite as clearly as we can because it's going yeah. through a bit more processing. If you look at the bottom left hand side of your screen now, you can see lots of buttons. And there's a left and right arrow, there's an up and down arrow. And they're the buttons that you're pressing to move the camera, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. And uh, as I say, with these buttons, you know, I can actually move it over to there. And if I wanted to then just save that preset, I could press the little, looks a little bit like a, um, CD, um, a floppy disk that we used to have. And I could set that under number six if I wanted. And then next time I press number six, it would good. Then go back to that uh, position mm. for me. So, so now these so, cameras were a bit more expensive. I think you said the ones that were fixed were around about thirty or forty pounds. These are just over a hundred. You said, didn't you? Uh, just over a hundred. Yeah. I mean, you can pay a lot of money for professional cameras, 
Uh, you can pay into thousands for some CCTV cameras. But all of the cameras I use, in fairness, are Chinese cameras. So uh, if we come out of there, we can go uh, oh, wow. if you want to. So now what we're um, looking at now there, James, this is your iPad screen, and we're looking at lots of your cameras, are we? Lots of my cameras. Uh, if you notice, I went round and cleared, cleaned all those cameras today <laughs> before we went on air, and that's how fast <laughs> a spider works. Oh, yeah. my goodness me. Tammy's uh, in her element. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I don't know how to get rid of spiders. They seem to love cameras. They're not supposed to be able to see infrared, although I do wonder whether the red light does attract them a little bit uh, or whether they're that clever that they know infrared attracts bugs and that's why they've got a, well, put a web in place. I was told that actually it was the warmth of them that they like as well. Could be. Um, you know, Because obviously any, anything, you, uh, anything you give power to is going to actually radiate uh, warmth, isn't it, mm. in some... Uh, way or another but uh, yeah it's, I have tried um, mint essence around the cameras and uh, it does seem to work a little bit but it doesn't seem to work good enough to keep doing it whether it washes off too quickly well, I don't know but it is sort of um, uh, the easiest way is just to go uh, I look a bit like Ken Dodd with that little fluffy um, <laughs> cleaner that he used to run around it's with, a tickling so, uh, stick a tickling stick <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, so, uh, as I say, that is um, what um, I, I said. Lynn laughs at me, but uh, and she's even got a photo. I think you got a photo somewhere of me running around with that as well. <laughs> so, it's, uh, which uh, thank, thank, thankfully I couldn't find. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I, I mean, by the but, I must um, reply to uh, relay some of these um, questions and mentions. Richard M6 UES has said, I actually use a program available in iOS and Android called At Home, which cleverly converts an old unused mobile phone which we all have lying around in drawers to act as a video streamer you download and install another app onto the old phone and just keep it powered up with a charger it works over wi-fi and is a very cheap and easy entry to the techniques that james is describing i've never heard of that that's good isn't yeah. it i've heard of something similar to that where you can actually use your phone as a cctv camera uh, it might have been that name but i it doesn't ring a bell, so I think it might, there might be more than one available. Yeah, mm. but uh, yep. it's certainly uh, something worthwhile looking it, into, especially it, if, if you. Get, sorry. No, it's. I'm sorry to interrupt you. In breaking news, though, we believe that there may be a visitor going to Boss's Diner. <laughs> oh, is that right? Let for. me um, let that's, me just switch over. Sorry to, to your, interrupt um, you, James. I'm sorry, but this is um, that's all obviously right. we I'll, can't. Uh, Oh, it's it's on that one. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's inside. Yeah, well, no, he inside? no, he's not inside yet. He's just round no, the back. No, he's round the back. He's round the back. No, no. Oh, he's thinking about it. He's just having a scratch, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, I will say that uh, they love coming up to the bot, the uh, sources of the plant pots, and having their water out of there. So uh, it obviously uh, tastes nicer out of there. But uh, well, we'll we'll so, keep an uh, eye on that. <laughs> Won't we? Eagle-eyed yeah, Tammy saw that happening on there. Sorry to interrupt you, James. No, no, <laughs> you're all right. You've got to keep an eye because they do move quickly. They yeah. do. Oh, oh, I've got a little... I don't know if you saw when we were... Uh, are you on... No, we're on the hog thing at the moment, aren't we? Sorry. I don't know. He's, uh, he's obviously got a flea, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a hot day, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so... Just thinking about it. Yeah. Well, we'll, I did we'll, see one of them. Saw, oh, that was a bug. I saw one of them um, uh, earlier on while I was talking. He sort of sat back and then did a roll backwards, sort of thing. So it's a, uh, he'd obviously practicing the scene for the next round, Olympics. He's coming round. This is all fascinating now, isn't it? Yeah, this is live yeah. TV for you. <laughs> <laughs> what is going to happen? <laughs> Who thought you'd be watching a hedgehog? Well, Spring Watch, eat your heart out because they have to record <laughs> yeah. it and play it later. This is happening live. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. We're doing live. We better carry on, no. James, and find out a bit <laughs> yeah, more about I, I, the uh, connections. But we'll 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 come rushing back if we see any yeah. any news breaking um, movements right. around. If Bob's you stay on that, if you stay on that screen, though, mm -hmm. um, we'll just do another pan until. I mean, I've got this one at the moment. Looking at the car. And uh, I just uh, pop that to that. That'll just pan. This is quite quick, actually, these newer ones. 
and that will just literally reposition itself, zoom out, and we've got the whole front garden there. Then, mm. so uh, and uh, just like before, move it right, move it left. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, uh, you can zoom in and out. We'll do whatever you want with them. So uh, the pan and tilt ones are definitely more versatile, but I suppose they can be three times more than your fixed ones. So um, you know. Depends what your budget is, doesn't it? Yeah, no, James, when you're out and you, you're at work or whatever and you, you want to record either wildlife or maybe, you know, people visiting and things like that and uh, parcel deliveries and things like that, how do you actually record this? Do you use the built-in card, record to that and then download it or do you actually record no, on the computer right. or the iPad? No, 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 nothing like that. I mean, obviously these cameras record to the SD card uh, using that uh, program cam high that we're talking about, um, you can actually uh, access them. But when I was uh, when I'm in the state storm chasing or whatever, I can still see what's happening back at the house. Mm. So it was uh, and I so, oh, well, first it, time James went storm chasing. We arranged to meet on <laughs> we arranged to meet on online, and um, he was late, and and I fell asleep. <laughs> And the first thing I knew was a lamp went on in the bedroom while I was sort of trying to watch it. So why did the lamp just go on? There must be something wrong. And I looked up and a little message said, oh, have I got your attention at last? What you have to do to wake you up. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Uh, uh, Doug, Doug Spooner, 2E0YWP, has said, I've got a hog family in my garden. Oh. So there we are, dog. Uh, Doug, rather, if you um, if you fancy getting a camera or something, this is the sort of thing you can do with it. It's incredible. Oh, I, 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 uh, uh, maybe we, we've never seen babies, and uh, if he's got one, uh, maybe he can uh, get a picture or set up a camera to take a picture yeah. or something, maybe uh, remotely, and uh, uh, we can show it next week, maybe. Yeah, yeah that would be great. And as I said uh, a little while ago, we're going to have this photography special. Um, anyway, so that's a great picture. If you can do something like that for us, Doug, we'd love to see it. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a fantastic sort of journey and showing us what you can do and how you can do all this stuff, James. I don't know if anybody's got any questions now, uh, but I'll tell you what we'll do. If it's all right, if you, you could just bear with us, because I think we've finished, mo have we finished most of the things you want to show us? Yeah, I think we've covered most things. Oh, we've shown how, oh yes, sorry. If we pop back to us. Yeah. Okay, well, Tammy's well, going to do about that. While Tammy does that, um, I'll just tell you that in a moment, I'll be showing you um, a, a couple of other cameras, in particular that little camera that we had on offer for uh, club members where you could buy either one for five pounds or three for 10 pounds. And I'm just gonna show you how to connect those up and maybe do something similar to these. So that's coming up in a moment, but we'll go back to James and uh, Lynn now. Oh, Lynn's just pointed out, I don't know if you saw it sitting on the table coming on, but I've got a couple of these. We've got one in our dining room, kitchen, and the other one in the front room. And uh, the motion sensors that I see you outside, uh, it actually comes on, depending on which motion sensor triggers it, it actually comes on with a colour, whether it's blue, white, green, or purple. So we actually know which one has actually triggered it and which camera to have a look at. See our hedgehogs or something else out in the garden. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. What's that called? I, I built this Oh, you myself. built it, right. Yes, it's connected to my home kit, so it is linked through that. Uh, but it is actually a protector. <laughs> it's very simply made. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, uh, there's a well-known uh, dessert, isn't there, that uh, <laughs> give you desserts in these pots? Yeah. But James, so, who uh, would you get to eat the dessert before you used it for that? Uh, obviously, Lynn. Obviously, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. So I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> And uh, inside, we've got just an LED ring. Oh, right. So, so yeah. So, so and it's just, uh, I, I've got um, in, in the bottom of it, not going to, this is not about this. So, it's so an 8266 uh, ESP board that's obviously uh, programmed with uh, some software that connects it through the home kit. So, uh, and uh, that way, uh, we can be sitting having our tea and uh, think, oh, the hogs are outside. Let's have a look, see what they're. Uh, up to tonight so on that note 
I think uh, we've covered everything. Well, I, th I think we covered everything. So what we'll do, James, we'll come back to us if that's right. I'm going to show everybody yeah, a little, sure. a couple of other cameras, less complex really to set up. Um, but if anybody's got any questions now that you'd like to ask James and Lynn, <clears throat> excuse me, before we um, finish the program tonight, then do that now. Enter it either on Facebook or on BATC, and we'll read either, relay those questions to them now. But uh, just before we finish the program, I did promise to talk a little bit about these cameras. So if we can show this, Tammy, on the, the camera that we've got there. Now, this is all a little bit impromptu, so <laughs> we're going to try and show you this little camera here. Now, this is the camera that we, uh, we, we, we were offered, which Gordon found for us, and uh, we sold them for, say, £5 each or three for £10, and we made a 100 or so quid as well for charity doing that. They're lovely little cameras. They're not waterproof, so would would just say that warning. So if you're going to use them outside, you would need to put them in something waterproof. Um, but I bet you that radio amateurs being radio amateurs, lots of these that people bought, because they were cheap. Not that I ever buy anything that's cheap no, and don't use not. them. But if they did, then they may not have either used these yet. So my idea tonight was just to show you how, to, how you can connect them up and how you can interface them. So firstly, let's just unplug it and show you what, they, what the connections are. Now, this is what the camera looks like in the front. Okay, and as James mentioned, there's a lens there and you can tighten up the lens with that little screw and, and release that. So if you do want to change the focal length, you can do it, but just release that screw first then you won't damage the thread that's underneath. Now in the back, you, you get this little cable loom with it. I won't pull it just in case anything goes wrong because I haven't got another one. This was the only one I managed to get because everybody else bought them. Um, but the, in, in this one here, uh, there's a little plug which you get to plug in and there's four wires. And if you look closely, and I probably can't get this close enough, I don't think. Actually, if we go on camera one, can we, Tammy? Mm -hmm. I'll try to show you here. You might just see there, you can just see it says audio plus 12 volts, ground and video. That's about as steady as I can hold my hand. So what that tells you is that they're, they're the four outputs. Now, unlike the cameras that James has been talking about tonight, these are not network cameras. This just gives a raw video output. It's called composite video. And what composite means basically is that the video in all, in all parts of it, the color and the brightness basically, are all combined with one. And until a few years ago, really, most of the cameras that were available on the market, if you had a camcorder and you plug that into your television or whatever, then that's what they connected to your television with, with the composite. You may have seen them connect actually with other things like, where are we? Something like this you might have in the back of your television. Although I think they're starting to disappear. This is called a SCART plug. And um, you, you could plug them into that. But the output of this camera anyway, this little cable that you get with it. So when you do open that box after having it in a little while, you're going to find three sockets here. The first one here is power. And that takes the sort of standard power plug that you've seen on lots of things. Now, underneath the bench here, or underneath our sort of studio desk here, I've got a 12 volt power supply. The middle is positive, very important. I don't think, and I'm not going to try it, that there is any polarity uh, protection inside the camera. So make sure if you need a 2.1 millimeter inside diameter plug there, and that plugs into there and will give the 12 volts power that the camera needs. The next one along is, is the video. That's a BNC plug. And most of you as your radio amateurs will know what a BNC plug, because I think it's taught certainly at intermediate level, if not at foundation. Um, and I'll show you how you can connect that in a moment. Now this other connection is something that I didn't really advertise with it initially, because on the box that came with these cameras, it didn't mention audio. But as um, somebody mentioned, I think it was David who wrote to me last week and said, he's found that it has got an audio output. And indeed, this is called a phono socket. You can most commonly see these sort of plugs, very cheap to buy, 20 pence or something like that. You can plug into that and you can get an audio feed from it. I have checked it and it has got a tiny electric microphone inside here, but it's not great sound, I would just say that. But for most people anyway, it's the pictures that are the most important. So how do you connect all this up? Well, there's a couple of things that you can connect it to. Firstly, I'm going to show you connect it to a monitor. Now, I, I, a few years ago, I bought one of these. This is a, about a five inch monitor. It's a very, very cheap. It comes in a box <clears throat> just a bit like this. Okay, and it's, it's, as they say, it's a vehicle security system or for a rear view camera. They're about 15 pounds remarkably, these monitors. I've had a look, eBay is full of them, sort of 15, 17 pounds, something like that. Um, and they've got two inputs. 
so sorry three cables and the main one is the yellow which is video and this one here which is power and I've already plugged my power unit into that so same sort of power plug as the uh, camera and in fact if I just press the button there you can see it's built in now this is wonderful so these are about 15 quid if you want to use it for a little security system for your door or maybe a, even a rear view camera for your uh, car or your motorhome or something like that then these might be just the sort of thing to use I've used this tonight just as an easy way of showing you how the camera works so if I set that up there and now I'm going to connect it up and I'm going to remember this is the the video this is the BNC so I've got a little short cable that I've connected there I have actually used an adapter so I should just show you this this is a little adapter that converts BNC to phono but of course you can if you if you've got some plugs yourself you can just make up a custom lead to do the same job so that's the camera lead for the video and now I need to plug some power in. I'm not going to show you audio tonight so this is the power connection again center positive 2.1 millimeter inside diameter DC plug and I've connected it and look at that instantly I've got pictures you can see what it looks like in here for us hello hello so this is <laughs> this is the picture of us and what we look at there you are. that's our view of what we see um, this is quite a good little camera really for the money um, it will see into very, very low levels. It hasn't got any infrared LEDs in, inside though. So you need to use a sort of lamp to illuminate it, the sort of thing uh, that James showed. Actually, Tammy, I, I don't know if at this point it might be a good idea to show one of our members, uh, David G3MPN, sent us these pictures. Now he's actually already mounted one of these cameras in a waterproof box and he's mounted this and he says it overlooks his shack. Look at that. So he's put a nice little plastic box, mounted it in there I think there's another picture as well. There we are. So you can really use these cameras and for a fiver each or, or £3.33 if you bought three of them. Yep. It's pretty remarkable. So that's how you can get the video out anyway and into a monitor like this. So these monitors under £20 on eBay and other places like that as well. Remarkably a cheap TFT monitor. But of course you may want to do more with that. You may want to plug it into a bigger television. So that's when to use something like this. Now I showed you the SCART plug, but this is actually an adapter. So here you've got yellow is the video, and then these are audio if you want to put the video, the audio feed in as well. But this is video. You could plug that into the back of your regular television if you've got a SCART socket, and you can plug the camera into that. Um, actually with the this monitor, I will tell you as well, you've got quite a long lead with it, um, about a 10 meter lead as well. To connect it to that so ideal from one end of a car or a vehicle to the other end um, the other thing that you can do is plug it into um, HDMI lots of TVs now have got HDMI and there's some remarkably cheap adapters you can get and this one has got an input there for um, if I just move that out of the way for a moment thanks Tammy this has got the inputs in this CVBS that means composite video basically there and then again left and right channels to get the output from your camera or other device or old camcorder into a modern television. Now we've plugged this as an HDMI plug and we've plugged this into our video mixer here. This is just a USB lead just purely to give it power. So I'm going to plug the camera in there and let's see what it looks like. So I'm just going to take the video feed again and I'm going to plug it into the yellow and then Tammy on your mixer there you should see that picture come up fairly soon. Yep. So now you can see probably a difference in quality. There we are, that's a bit different doesn't it? And that's direct again hello and and that's what it looks like from the camera so it's pretty remarkable what you can do with that now there is one other thing that you can do with that Tammy if we could just go back to the, the uh, camera the extra camera that we've put in for this now and I can show you that you can get adapters like this again very very cheaply uh, 10 15 quid that sort of thing you can either take that HDMI signal and and plug it straight into a computer this converts HDMI this one into um, USB and there's quite a few free programs on the market uh, you know on the on the web rather which you can download to record the pictures from it which if you're using it for security may be the sort of thing you want to do or probably for best quality you actually just don't need to have HDMI in you I haven't got one but that's why I couldn't show it but you can get an adapter just like this but has an output instead of HDMI it has USB so it can take your input from your camera and put it straight into USB put it into your computer and then you can record from it 
So that's what I just wanted to show you, the sort of thing and the sort of th pictures that you can get from this. Um, some monitors may have them, some computer monitors may have a composite video input directly for this, but I doubt it. Um, the main thing to do with this is either put it straight into a little video monitor like the one I showed you, or you can plug it into a computer via an adapter that converts composite video to USB. The other thing I'd just like to mention uh, while we're talking about that is the quality of cameras that camcorders, especially if you want to do some wildlife, um, this sort of camcorder is a similar to the type that's what we use in the studio. About £200, that's just the lens cover there. The quality of these, some of them, is remarkable. This is an HD camera. It's got a 72 times zoom. I think, um, I think about 40 of that is what's called an optical zoom. And these are remarkable things for a couple of hundred pounds. And of course, you can connect those as well. If I just open the side a minute and I show you inside, and you've probably seen this sort of thing, you know, if you own one already, you'll certainly know. There's a US, an HDMI socket there that you can plug straight into either that adapter to connect it to a computer to record from it, or you can connect that obviously straight into your television as well. So they are quite remarkable, some of these pictures. And the one other type of camera I'd like to show you, um, I haven't used this one yet. This is a ring camera. Now you've probably, many of you will have seen or heard one of the ring doorbells that are very popular now, I must admit, we've got them. They're great if you're not in, someone presses the button and, uh, and uh, uh, it alerts you on a phone or an iPad or some device in the house and sends a picture as well. Well, now ring also make cameras. This is very small as well. I mean, trying to give you an idea of the size of it. If I put it next to that camera, <clears throat> this is remarkably small. You can probably see from my hand. And everything is built into this camera <clears throat> and it's very, very easy to connect. Um, and if you take out the subscription as well, it will actually record things for you. So it has got some motion alerts to do the sort of thing uh, James mentioned. This particular one is about £50, but it isn't waterproof. This is an indoor version, but they do do an outdoor version. In fact, they do one with floodlights as well. It's about just over £100. So if you do feel that the, all the software and the wiring and things is all a bit much. This is a wireless device and this would be a way of maybe getting started with it. We hope that um, James, what he's shown you tonight, um, is going to inspire a lot of you to give it a go. But if you, if you want a ready-built solution, then as I said, Ring is one of the manufacturers. There's lots of others as well available. Some of the other um, uh, Chinese manufacturers and things advertise again on the usual eBay and uh, Amazon, that sort of site. But uh, this is the one by Ring. I hope that's given you an idea. Now, have we got any questions, Tammy, or anything that we, any feedback for uh, James? Um, I'm not sure we have actually. We had Nigel, 20 NLK, just saying that he's got a fox underneath his blackberry bush. Oh, goodness me, a <laughs> fox, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Nigel, I'm gonna say what I, asked, I said to Doug a little while ago. Please, if you can get a picture of that for our photography special in a few weeks, that would be brilliant. Because these are fantastic things for people to see. We don't have any more. Oh no other questions or no comments. No other questions or comments. So I think that uh, it's coming up to nine o'clock. I think that's a very fitting time to end this night live. But let's go quickly back to James and should, to Lynn. Um, we should see if there's anything going on at the uh, the Boss Hogs. All oh, right, okay, let's go Is there. Is there anything then. going on at Boss Hogs? Okay, let's no, go. No, they've all gone. Oh, they've all have gone. They all gone? They? Well, they, they came oh, no. bang on cue. Uh, at least they came to see us for a little while, didn't they? Did we have. Uh, we can still hear a uh, combine going in the back field, oh. so uh, possibly um, uh, they're not liking that either. But um, it's harvest time, and we live in the country, so uh, yeah. Yep. So, right. But okay. at least they came and saw us. Yep. Well, thank you ever so much for tonight, both of you and Lynn. I know you were, you were uh, snooking into this at the last moment to be camera lady, but you did a brilliant job. Uh, we've both right. enjoyed, and thank you both for sharing in letting us into your home as well, literally, um, and, and into your garden to see those wonderful bits of technology that you've got, because it really is incredible. And I'm sure it's inspired lots of people tonight to um, have a go and do something similar in their house. Maybe just one camera at a time, though. <laughs> <And> <laughs> That's where I started, one camera. And if the BBC are watching, of course, they can contact you for the next Spring Watch or Autumn uh, Watch or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm available. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Packham will be making and, uh, his way to you before you know it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I've got a camera lady as well. Absolutely. No, it's really, really good. Thank you ever so much. I'm sure everybody's really appreciated it and letting us into to see how you came up with those wonderful pictures. And we hope you'll share with, with us some more in the future as well. But once again, thanks very much to James M0UKS and to Lynn tonight for uh, sharing us.
and letting us into your home. Thank you. My You're pleasure. welcome. There we are. Thanks. That's uh, so special. Thanks again to James and Lynn for letting us uh, do all of that with them and for telling us how all those cameras can be connected and set up. Just the time to tell you again what's happening next week on NARC. We've got the GB Terrace News at seven o'clock on Sunday on GB3 MB. On Monday, the Monday Night Net at half past seven, again on GB3 MB. And at uh, half past eight, we've got the 80 meter CW Net. And next Wednesday, it is that video, wherever I've done it with it, here we are. It is this. It's going to be a brilliant, it's a really brilliant program. This It's a one-off chance. Remember, this part of the program we will not be uploading to YouTube. So um, if you want to see that, the 2012 Oscar London, uh, the uh, Olympics special event station, if you want to know the story behind that, then do watch us next week on Arc Live. And don't forget that photography evening in a few weeks' time. Uh, again, start collecting those pictures together. It does, as Tammy said, it doesn't have to be latest pictures, it doesn't have to be current ones. It might be a favourite picture you took years ago, but we'll be asking you to help us on that interactive evening and share your pictures with us. But that's about it, I think, for now. Um, and uh, don't forget that, that quiz as well. What the puzzle? What on earth is this? Well, what on earth is this? Do you know what that is? You don't know what that is. I do don't you? know what that is. I'm going to keep it from Tammy. If you know what it is, though, let us know by three o'clock next Wednesday. Same with that. Any other stories or pictures, do send them to that to us by then. But for now, from Tammy M0TC. Goodbye. And from me, David G7ERP. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week for NARC Live. Bye-bye.